I recently had a chance to visit the Bethlehem Steelworks near Allentown, Pennsylvania. The Bethlehem Steelworks was once a world-leading steel plant that stretched for miles and at its height employed over 30,000 workers. It helped build the U.S. into a world power and was a key asset in winning both world wars. However, it is now abandoned and rusting, a monument to the America that once was. It is really quite sad seeing it in its current state. The Bethlehem Rolling Mill and Iron Company, as it was initially known, was founded in 1857 on the heels of the U.S. Civil War and is located along the Lehigh River around 15 miles west of Allentown. Bethlehem was an ideal location with access to iron ore mines in towns such as Cornwall and Morgantown, located in eastern Pennsylvania. It also had access to anthracite coal fields in central Pennsylvania via the Lehigh Canal and later the Lehigh Valley Railroad. The site also had local limestone quarries, a sufficient local population to provide workers, and rail access to Philadelphia and New York City. Its first blast furnace was opened in 1861, with others being established over the next couple of years. Initially, Bethlehem Ironworks focused on products such as rail ties, which helped to fuel the U.S.'s growth and westward expansion. The railroad's general superintendent and chief engineer was a man named John F. Fritz, a native of Pennsylvania who is often called the father of American steel. Fritz developed the three-high rolling process, which produced stronger steel rails than the previous two-high process. Fritz introduced many state-of-the-art European techniques to the U.S. steel industry, and he played an important role in replacing the Bessemer process for producing steel with the more efficient open hearth process. The Bethlehem Ironworks was founded during a time of great progress for the United States, and in many ways is representative of that progress. The second half of the 19th century saw the establishment of the U.S. as an industrial power to rival Europe, with plants such as Bethlehem Steel providing the foundation for this industry. It saw the closing of the West and the building of a railroad network that spanned the continent. It was during this time that the U.S. achieved technical and economic parity with Europe, with plants like Bethlehem Ironworks emerging as state-of-the-art facilities that were equal, if not superior, to their European counterparts. During the late 1890s, the United States began to look outward, with visionaries such as Alfred Mann seeing the U.S.'s role as an emerging world power. During this time, the Bethlehem Ironworks adjusted its focus to produce steel for naval construction. In 1899, Bethlehem Ironworks became the Bethlehem Steelworks to reflect the plant's focus on structural steel, both for naval and civil applications. Bethlehem Steel drove the U.S. through the dreadnought race of the early 1900s and produced steel for the standard class of super dreadnoughts produced leading up to World War I. This image shows the turret of the USS Pennsylvania, sister ship of the USS Arizona, being produced in Bethlehem Steel's number two machine shop, an immense building that was specifically built to construct large components required for warship construction. During the 1920s, there was a lull in naval construction, due in part to treaties such as the Washington Naval Treaty, and Bethlehem Steel focused more on non-military applications. Bethlehem Steel provided steel for buildings such as the Empire State Building, the Rockefeller Center, and the George Washington and Golden Gate Bridges. It also provided steel for the construction of Hoover and Grand Coulee Dams. During World War II, Bethlehem Steel was a key asset in U.S. production, providing steel for many well-known warships such as the Iowa-class battleships. The Bethlehem Steel plant was centered around five massive blast furnaces, labeled A through E. The blast furnaces were fed with iron ore, coke, and limestone, which was delivered from an ore yard close to a mile away and was transported via a system of raised tracks and cars called the Hoover Mason trestle. The material was then transferred into skiff tubs and raised to the top of the furnaces to be loaded. The furnaces were then fed with high pressure air provided by a series of massive blowers housed in an adjacent building. The air was heated in a series of gas-heated cylinders and fed into the blast furnace where it ignited the coke. The melted iron or pig iron settled at the bottom of the furnace 
where it was collected in rail cars and transported to the steel foundry. In the steel foundry, the pig iron was infused with oxygen in order to remove excess carbon, creating steel which was stronger and less brittle. Steel was then cast and milled in order to produce a variety of finished products, ranging from armor and naval artillery to steel beams. Why did Bethlehem Steelworks fail? It has been suggested that its failure was due to new technology. However, it had already adapted to over 100 years worth of new technology, and its Homer Research Lab was on the forefront of developing this new technology, which, along with the plant's experienced workforce, should have given it an advantage. One factor may have been currency inflation. In 1971, the U.S. went off the gold standard and the value of the dollar rose significantly, which increased the price of U.S. goods in foreign markets, making them less competitive. Another factor may have been the inflation of the late 70s and the resulting economic crash in the early 80s. Inflation led to a glut in manufacturing and the subsequent recession shrunk the demand for manufactured goods, resulting in increased competition. A third factor was the advent of free trade, which allowed nations with cheaper labor costs to undercut in U.S. manufacturing. After decades of decline, Bethlehem Steel finally closed down in the 1990s and the company filed for bankruptcy. Bethlehem Steelworks has now been idle for over 20 years. Much of the plant has been demolished and replaced by new buildings, including a hotel and a casino. The building that once housed the steel mill is now decaying and its roof has caved in. The blast furnaces are still standing, but covered in rust, and the plant's offices are closed off to the public due to asbestos. The plant's electrical shop has been preserved and now houses a museum dedicated to American industry. I would like to close this video out by dedicating it to all of the men and women who worked at the Bethlehem Steel Mill during its 146 years of operation. Thank you for watching. This is a new format for me, so any comments you have would be greatly appreciated. If you like the video, please go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to see more, then you can go ahead and subscribe as well. Thank you, and until next time,